As our journey continues, the question would be, why do we need a repository pattern? What is its significance? The repository pattern is a design pattern that's used commonly in software development, especially in the context of databases. They are used to manage the access to and from a data store. Now, if you're joining me, welcome to Code and Power Road. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please follow along. Uh, it's designed in a way that you can pick up any video and you'd still be comfortable going forward. So what we have here is we have an API that focuses on to-do items. So it's an API of tasks. So we have we have five endpoints, if not four. We have one endpoint that gets all tasks. We have one endpoint that gets a task by ID. And we have one endpoint that creates the post. We have one endpoint that updates the put. And we have finally the one that deletes. And if you can see what we're using, we're using Entity Framework Core, which we have the database context, which is created. We have one table as of now, which is a to-do item table. Uh, we have the to-do item model. So a task will have an ID, we'll have title, description, and we'll have the Boolean to, to see if it's completed. Uh, we are using our connection string, our local DB, which is the SQL Server Express within Visual Studio. And if you go to our program CS, we have added our database context here. But we're saying we need to bring in the repository pattern. And we've said it's pretty much used in software development and we want to use it in this API. So what's the main purpose? What we want to do here is we want to abstract the details of how we access our database. At the same time, we want to centralize how you access the database. As it is now, you see that we have one controller. It's called task controller. This guy is talking to a database directly. Now you might wonder, isn't that okay? That is not really okay. What if I have 10 controllers which talk to the same database? I will need to to talk to the database directly in all the 10 controllers. Now the question will be, what if um, the access changes? It means I would have to come to these 10 controllers and change at every place. That's tedious, that's not maintainable, that's not scalable. So what we want to do is to put all that logic in one place. So if it changes, we change there. We do not touch the rest of the controllers. And as we start, you are going to see what I'm talking about. So we'll also touch briefly uh, about dependency injection and how it will help us to implement our repository. So let us proceed and begin with our... We are going to use an interface to implement the repository. Others use abstract classes. It's pretty much how you intend to do, but I think interfaces are better. And an interface, if you are a beginner, is just a contract. A contract that will say that if you are going to use this interface, you have to satisfy this, this contract. So I'll create a folder. Uh, then we'll call that folder repository. Then I'll create an inf interface, which I will call, it's a new item. I'll call it I, I to do item repository. Okay. Repository. And within the interface, we're going to state what we'll do. So we have four um action points here we have one to get so we need to have one that is going to give us something that to do there we need one that will give us all items it returns a list we need one that gives us a to-do item we need one that adds updates and deletes so this is just a contract to say you need to satisfy this thing but this is just a contract. We have to implement that. So to implement the contract, we're going to create a class. And we'll call that class to do item repository. Then I'll say, I'll create a to do item repository class. And this, and this is going to inherit from I to do repository. And the moment I do that, it will complain to say, you have to implement the contract and I'll say it's fine control dot then I'll implement that interface of course I haven't fully implemented it but I've just satisfied it so our interface in this regard will focus on data access 
And in this API, if you go to our task controller, we have used the DB context. So instead of having it here, we'll put it in the repository so that it is accessed centrally. So get here and for us to give it something, it depends. So this to do repository will depend on the on the to do uh, context. So we're going to use what we call dependency injection using the constructor. So whatever the class depends on, you pass it in the constructor. So I'll create a constructor. CTOR is a shortcut for a constructor. Then I'll say this class will depend on the to-do item context. So you pass that context whenever you call this class. But we need to also play with this context. So we need to assign to it a field. Um, that will allow us to talk to the database. So we have that thing there. Let's begin with the get get all items. We'll just return. So we'll get the context. We'll say we need the to do items. Then we'll say push it to a list. Like so. All right. So that is going to return the list items. The one for ID, we are going to say return. Get me the context. And on the to-do table, we will do a first or default. And then we'll say, we can say x goes to x.id. So with against the ID that we have there given. So it's saying that. There's a possible now reference. We'll do that in the next video, which we'll look at error handling. For now, just leave it as it is. We'll assume that there will be no nows. Then we will proceed to the one that adds. So what we'll do here is we're going to say, get the context, get the class, which is to do the table add and to do item. But don't forget the most important line is to serve the changes. If you don't do that, it will not serve. For us to delete, we have to make sure that what we want to delete, first of all, exists. And once we know that it exists, then we can do so. So var, we can say to do item to delete is equal to, we we'll use the same context. Then we'll say, give me the to do items. Then we'll say first, first or default where x goes to so we'll do a lambda expression again there is equal to id then we'll, we'll do an if check we'll check if this is not equal to now it means it does exist we'll say give us the context give us the item to do remove from that table but remember the keyword to save changes you want to also save those changes uh what else for us to get to do items we've done that for us to update an item, it means we also sort of need to find out if it does exist because you, you cannot edit uh, var. You can't edit what doesn't exist. So say var item to edit. Okay. Then you're going to bring in the context. You're going to bring in the table and say first or default. First or default, that will also go to x, x with an id and id. Then we'll do an if check to see if the item to edit is not equal to now. If it's not equal to now, we'll bring in the context. Then we'll say on this context, there has to be an entry. And that entry will be, it would, will be um, the to do item we've given us. And this will equal entity state dot modified. If it's modified, okay, we've got an error there. It's saying, uh, what is it saying? Must the left side? It must be okay. Okay, I think just put here state is equal to that. And here we're saying to do item because now that's the ID is there. So there we have our repository. But the question is, we want to create a central place where we're going to access our, our repository. That's where the issue of a dependency injection comes into play. The same way 
our class uh, to do item repository, it depends on the DB context. The same way our application will also mainly depend on the to do item repository because there will be many places that in future we want to use a repository. So instead of us going into every class, and if you go to a class, let's say a class like um, you want to use it in the task controller, what you would do, you would say to do item repository dot item repository uh, is equal to new repository. You can do this and then you can use the item repository there. But the problem is you will have to depend on that class in every class you use and that is bad practice. So we need to find a way to resolve that dependency. That's where the dependency injection comes into play. You will see that we have this place where it says add your containers here. So we are going to bring in the we are going to bring in the to do to do item repository dependency. Okay. So what we'll do there is we'll say builder.services.addscoped dot this and this so what we're saying is whenever you see the i to do repository all right in any class that is an interface which is this one now this interface does not have any implementation we want to find a place where we have implemented it so this will say if you find i to do repository this will be the class where you're going to find in your dependencies which is this class and i'll show you why that's important so let's go to our api i mean to our task controller since we're saying we don't want to talk to the database directly, I'm going to remove the context. I'm going to remove the context. And instead, I'm going to bring in an I to do repository. And I'll call this repository. And I'll bring in a field, which will be called to do repository. And then we'll do that. And I'll bring it here. So you see. My class depends on the to-do repository, but I'm not bringing the actual class here. I'm bringing in an interface, which means I've already abstracted there. It means my class task control does not depend on that class directly in this class. Then I'll come here and I will just say, for you to get all items, you can say var. So I'm going to duplicate this. Then I'll say, just call the repository dot get to do items and we can remove whatever we were using for that as simple as that for you to get this i'm going to duplicate this then i'm going to say uh, give me the repository and a get to do item and once that is there proceed to do that when we get to creating all i'm going to do here is is say get me the repository and add the item and I can comment out these guys like so for me to put all I would do is I won't even need all this logic all I can just say is say repository.update to do item and that line is going to negate all of these lines and I can comment them out all right if it's deleting uh, I'm going to bring in my repository here. I'm going to say repository dot delete item. And I can comment all those guys out. And let's see and, and, and let's run it to see if the API will still behave the same way. So I'm going to run the API. Okay, now if I say let me get our task. It will still go to the database and get me our task. It get me leg day, it will get me gym. Uh, this one ID is one, that, that one ID is two. I just try to get two as well. Uh, let's execute that. And you see that it functions as expected. But here's where the plot thickens. Let's, let me show you how important it is to have a central place. If your boss comes and says, you know what? We want to change the way we talk to our database. We want to talk to our database in a different type of way. Now you have one place where you can change it. It's, 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 it's here. It's no longer in any controller. 
So what do we do? I can create another class here and I, I can say uh, new way, new way database. Just, just assure me. The new way database is going to inherit from the i repository, i to do repository, and it will complain that it needs this. So what I'll do is I'll just focus on the on the get item. And what we can do here is I can say return new list of to do items for instance. So let's say I have these classes. I have one to learn all these things to return this thing. But what we have here is we have another way to get access. Let's say this way we're going to go in the database. Now how do you handle this way? Because previously we had the to do we had the to do context here. We we're talking to our database directly. Now we have used our interface. Now it means control task control doesn't care how we you get your, your tasks. The interface will worry about that. And our boss has told us to use a new approach and we have added our new approach. So how do we change? Simple. All you do is you go to the dependency injection container and instead of I'll comment this out, instead of you using it to do repository, you can just say new way new way database and that way you have changed everything and if i run it again it's a new way now so let it run and i'll say get me the tasks and i'll say execute and there there you have it you get c sharp and angular and that's the importance of one of the importance of the dependency injection is it allows you to resolve the dependencies so the dependency injection will worry about knowing what to do in real time so when, whenever you see I to do, you're saying use the new way database. When you see the other way, you're saying use this way. So centrally, we can add new functionality without touching anything, not even what it depends on. There as a class, we're safe. So if this was good content, if, and if you enjoyed this repository pattern, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and most importantly, to enable us to do this content, we need support on our Patreon channel. And those who support us also get access to our source code, which is there already as I'm speaking in this video. So happy coding. Our next video is we shall take the pattern itself and make it generic, not just tied to our application, but tied to every application. Then we shall take it up a notch and make our software more maintainable, scalable, and testable.